Uber. Coming in at a little bit over a couple ounces is the 2019 Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the 2020 Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 4 Gig. They both have fans. This 3B Plus used to be in this uh, 3D printed case that I got off of Etsy and I had to put it back in the case because it needs the fan to cool and for some reason they, even though they're the same exact case this fan kind of grinds when I put it on the bottom so it's on the top and this one works perfectly. Who are they fighting against? Weighing in at 28 and a half pounds just for this not the keyboard the mouse and the monitor is the Commodore Amiga 2000 HD with a Vampire 500 V2 128 megs of RAM 68080 FPGA this is running Coffin R56 and what we're going to be doing today is some comparisons side by side live between the Vampire running the Quake demo and the Raspberry Pis doing the same thing. We'll do a sysinfo real quick so we can get some baselines. Uh, benchmarks running which Amiga? I wish I could make this bigger, but I'm going to zoom in. So, this unit is currently running the AC68080 at 85.1 megahertz. This is Coffin R56 on the 2.12 RC2 core on it. So, this is my pimp machine. I love my 3000, but this thing is just flipping awesome. If you run a benchmark on sys speed here, I'm just going to go to the sys info area. Right now, she's uh, acting like a 347 megahertz 68040. Baselines on sys info here, which doesn't always give you the correct best results. We'll pan over to this monitor. So this says AC 68080, 68080 plus 6882 FPU. There is no MMU. Base comparison for dry stone MIPS and megaflops. Megahertz usually is never reported correctly in here. 148,563 dry stones. We are at 155.07 MIP and 82.38 megaflop. And it says, hush, vampires, for the comment. I like that. That's kind of funny. What we're going to do now is, now what we're going to do for this test is the following. I'm going to go into games on Coffin here. And we are going to run Quake, la, 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 the demo. Don't know what it's going to run on, so we're just going to say OK. It's probably going to run over here. And we're just going to let the demo roll. Nope, it's running over here. I don't know what the calculations are going to be yet because it's running in RTG for some reason. But we'll let it go. And at the end of this, it'll tell you the frames per second. Usually it's in the 30s, but this is kind of cruising. <laughs> it's super fast. And smooth, you can see there's no glitching. It's uh, just running the standard demo. All right, so we averaged 30.70, oh, wait a minute, 31.56 seconds, 30.70 frames per second. That's the vampire. We'll quit. Yes. And that's just the stock, whatever, resolution on it. Now let's get to the Raspberry Pi. All right, so here we go. Test number two is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with the hot pink iHome keyboard. In my configuration, if my mouse decides to work today, there we go. What we're gonna do for fairness and compareness is we're gonna crank the CPU to the maximum, 68040, CPU internal, and turbo. FPU is under JIT, which is just-in-time compiler. All right, so here we are. I lowered the resolution a little bit to give it a better chance. Also up the RAM to 64 megs, and we have 4 megs of chip. So this is the 3B Plus on a Mebian 
to start we're going to run uh, the same benchmarks which is which Amiga and sysinfo so this says a 2 meg ECS Agnes in PAL AGA Lisa 040 Ooh, look at that, MMU. 040 plus 6082 and an 040 MMU in use. We're going to hit speed and write down our results. 145,000, five, or 145,808 dry stones, 152.20 MIPS, and 121.59 mega flops. Now that, even though the Vampire had 155.07 uh, MIPS, this has 152. Very, very close. Uh, mega flops, the Pi 3B Plus almost doubles, almost doubles, the 82.38 of the Vampire. Let's run Sys Speed. We're going to go to the system info page on SysSpeed. This is where it takes a hit. It says it's a 68040 at 75 megahertz. Not too bad. But the Vampire is 300 and something. That's fine. I do not like to go into the CPU on high and run it because it just kind of crashes the... Uh... I can try it. Let's see. 776 MIPS, which is far superior to what it's saying to Sysinfo's comparison. Kind of crazy. I'm comparing it to a Blizzard 1260 at 75. You know, I don't know. But that's the 3B+. Plus. Let's get its demo running. So now we're going to run Quake. Demo. I'm just hitting the default. It's loading. It's loading. The Amiga was faster at loading this. My word, it just fell on its face. The little SD card light is solid. And that just stopped. And it froze. So let's give this a power off and a power on. Like I said, it's $35 for the Pi 3B Plus. The 4 does a little better. Okay, so it decided to show up finally. So we're going to run Quake. We're going to run the demo. Default mode, and that's it. Locks up. Same resolution. And bad surface exists and shut down. What the hell? Vid shutdown. Do I need to lower my resolution? Alright, so we're having some technical difficulties. Okay. Quick. Run demo. Okay. Bad surface extents. Can I run the game? Huh. Quick. Fine. Quick. Well. I cannot get this to do anything. No matter what I choose, 320 by 240, 60 bit, 256 color, fine. Alright, so the 3B Plus is going to have to bow out from the event. It runs, but there's something All up. Right, so here we go, Pi 4. It has to have this little dongle because it's micro HDMI. And we'll post the results afterwards. So remember, I turned my resolution down because this little box that I'm on, this HDMI splitter, doesn't do too well. All right, so we're going to run Quake. Oops. Hell, we'll run Quake first. Run demo. I'm just hitting the button. Okay, this one's running. So, Pi 4. Running pretty good. Nice and fast. Whee. 
Okay, so 969 frames, 30 seconds flat, and 32.4 FPS. I don't have a comparison for the Pi 3, but we do have yes to run the uh, performance tests. Sysinfo, sysinfo. So here the Pi 4 says it is uh, 6840 plus 6082 FPU, and it has an MMU that is not in use. We're going to run speed. Boop. Wow. Wow. Wow, indeed. 450,889 dry stones. Compared to the Vampire's 148,000, so it just obliterates it. MIPS, 470.65, and Mega Flops is 165.97. So when I made the video of an Amiga 400 plus megahertz Vampire clone, I was correct. So the Vampire, for comparison, ran 148,563. 155 MIPS and 82 Mega Flops. Now this is saying Virtual Amiga because it kind of is a Virtual Amiga on a Pi. So let's uh let's check its memory and do all that good stuff. So 128 megs of RAM, which is what the Vampire natively has, but this has 8 megs of chip. Pretty cool, and that's it. So that doesn't do it. All right, so that is sysinfo. Do all right. So we're gonna run sys speed. I think this is the older sys speed, but it still has the uh, sysinfo. So sysinfo on this is saying it's 87 megahertz, 68040. Get out of the way there, cursor. 87 megahertz, 68040 with iCache deburst, decache burst, and copyback cache turned on. 128 megs, uh, it's in 1280 by 720, 16-bit, it's at 50 hertz PAL. So if I go to low and then CPU, which I did not do on the Vampire, this is a 916 MIPS and 456 mega flops. Now there's different testing for everything. I don't know which one is accurate. I like sys speed, but sometimes it can report weird results. Apologies for my mouse, this uh, hot pinker. Here kind of uh, is a little weird. So here's which Amiga. There goes my phone. Here's which Amiga. It says that the MMU is not available. AGA Lisa. Blah 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 blah. 131 megs of RAM. Eight megs of chip. Uh, UAE emulator. This is all of the 128 megs. Another 128 megs for RTG. So this thing is far pimped out in graphics. My. Uh, the video card in my 4000 has 2 megs of RAM. But this is, you know, 25, 30 years of everything you could ever want in Amiga. Can you imagine trying to piece this hardware together today just to get that kind of speed? So to sum it up, the Vampire was 148,563 dry stones, 155.07 MIPS, and 82.38 megaflops. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus came in at 145,808 dry stones, 152.20 MIPS, and 121.59 mega flops. And the Pi 4 Quake frames per second was 969 frames in 30 seconds at 32.4 frames per second. Dry stones powered out the house at 450,889 with a big MIPS push at 470.65. That is just totally crazy, and 165.97 mega flops. The Pi 4 4 gig just blows away the Vampire in performance. The Pi 4, as you can see here, was $55.90. I bought this a couple months ago. Could be cheaper now because the 8 gigger is out. Uh, the Pi 3B Plus cost me $35, and I did buy a case and a power supply, so your results may vary, but the base unit is that, and I had to buy that HDMI micro to HDMI thing because I didn't have one. I had the other kind. Um, so if you had to piece together, now I've pieced together this 2000 past 30 years. So you figure, I spent at least 12, 13, 1400 dollars on this unit when it was brand new. 
I have the Vampire, which cost me 640 US dollars. I have a Ethernet module for the Vampire, which was six dollars. I have a GoTech, which was like 20, 30 bucks. I 3D printed a lot of my own parts. I have a microwave flicker fixer, which was four hundred dollars originally. I don't know what they're going for nowadays. I also have the Xsurf 100 network card with the USB blaster and Poseidon. That was like three hundred and something dollars. And you know, that's that's about it. So you figure this is about two thousand dollars worth of stuff that got smoked by a fifty dollar little arm processor. I don't know if it smokes it. I enjoy the authentic Amiga experience. But with hardware prices soaring because collectors keep collecting and sellers keep binging the prices like it's lifestyles of the rich and famous and it's getting harder and harder to acquire original Amiga parts or even used Amiga parts. We all know that on eBay uh, untested means that is broke and you're going to have to do something to it. Or it actually could be untested. What would I do? If I had no Amiga and I wanted to relive uh, some youth, I would actually go for the Raspberry Pi. You could run uh, this version. You can configure your own. You Look, look back at my Pi 3B uh, vampire video when I did that in the past. And, you know, the 3B Plus is very close to the vampire. So my vampire is running at 347 megahertz 040. Uh, this was running at like 80 on, on which Amiga? Or, or, or sys speed. So the 3B plus is 145, the vampire is 148. 152 MIPS, 155 MIPS. 82 megaflops, 121. So it still is very close between the 3B plus, which you can acquire probably for $20 now, and the, the vampire. I love the authentic Amiga experience, don't get me wrong. Sound does work on this totally fine. I am in an HDMI uh, little switcher box here where I can bump and go to my computer, like the Mac or my Windows machine or the Pi and whatever. So the sound doesn't transfer through the monitor. I do have to run external speakers. And I can, I just didn't want to in case I ran into some copyrighty issues. But this is totally configurable. It has all the games on it. It has my network on it. I can browse the web. I can listen to, you know, the nice RTG versions of Eagle Player and have all the quadroscopes running and every it's playing mods right now, but it's just there's no audio currently. But with the video I did on this, and I know I'm talking a lot and I am sorry. With the video I did on this Pi Mega Lockdown Edition. When, if you build this, go into that program, uh, into system programs and fire up virus C and let it run. There are about 400 of the Happy New Year 96 viruses floating around on here. Do not do anything without virus C running. There is a new boot block update on the web page that the people who make virus Z, they have some new stuff for that new virus that came out like in 2020 because I guess during lockdown everybody got bored and decided to screw with the Amigas. But that's about it. That is my video on the the Vampire Amiga 2000 versus whoops, almost almost knocked the fan off here. Versus the 3B Plus and the uh, Model B 4 gig Pi 4. So thank you for watching this competitive fight, and I think it was you know, pretty fair. But in the end, I do believe that the the Pi 4 is the way to go for emulation nowadays. It just, it's so fast. It's so fast and it's so cool when you get it set up properly, build it your way. Now with the new version of Amiberry supporting ISO loads, you can do 3.9, you can build your own, you can just drag and drop ISOs with midnight. So that about wraps it up for this uh, comparison test between the Vampire and the two Pies. And I hope this uh, helps clear the air a little bit about what this can do, I mean, this is an incredible machine, don't get me wrong. And what these can do, they're incredible in their own ways, too. And uh, it was a pretty good comparison, and I think we did answer some of your questions, I hope. If not, comment in the boxes down below and let me know what you think and any comments you have or questions, and we will all be glad to answer them. So, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.